Well, coming to you this week from the west side of the United States, Phoenix, Arizona, to be exact, as we get going on another State Champs Michigan's Hang Time Chalk Talk podcast presented by the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan. My name is Lauren Plant, and every week uh, during the season, we get a chance to talk to a high school boys basketball coach, talk about a variety of topics, a very interesting topic that I think all of the basketball fandom should be interested in as there could be some very positive changes coming up as a result of the state tournament. And uh, joining me today, and I'm very uh, I'm glad and we had some technical difficulties early, so I'm glad that we could make this work, is Greg Emink. He is the head boys basketball coach at Grand Haven. And uh, Greg, thanks again for joining me. Thanks for having me. I'm excited about it. All right. Awesome. So first off, we'll uh, get the elephant in the room. Tough loss, right, on Monday night. Uh, Coopersville. Uh, how would you assess the Buck season now that uh, it's in the rearview mirror? Well, I think like a lot of teams that probably didn't, advanced beyond Monday, it ended a little bit too soon. Um, but all in all, a great year for us, finishing 17 and six. Uh, I think a lot of people heading into the season uh, would have not expected that from our, our team. So a lot of credit to our guys, the, the time, the sacrifice they put in uh, to making it a great year. And, and above all, you know, um, what a what an awesome group of, of students to, to be able to coach and players to be able to coach. And that makes you know the season a little bit more special for the head coach. Yeah, I mean, in the end, that's what it's all about. And these guys, you know, I'm sure have lifelong friends now that uh, uh, they'll connect with and, and, and stay connected with uh, as they move on to uh, whatever it is that uh, life holds for them in the future. Do you feel good about the group you have coming back? I do. Um, you know, we've got a group of really hardworking juniors that uh, will be asked to step into a little bit bigger role next year with more responsibility, not only on the court, but in terms of leadership as well. And then, uh, you know, we've got a, a JV team that uh, – fared very well this season and we're excited about them as well and you know it's just up to us coaches to now figure out how we can put all those pieces together and have a, hopefully another good season. Basketball is in your blood from what I understand your father was a longtime high school coach maybe even at, at other levels but tell me about him and the influence that he had in your life as it relates to the game. Yeah I mean I think he's probably the most influential person in terms of uh, basketball and me and becoming interested in basketball. Um, a lot of days spent in the gym as an elementary student, middle school student, uh, going to his practices, shooting on the side basket, and uh, really just growing up in the gym after school in a lot of ways. And, uh, you know, he's the person that taught me how to dribble, taught me how to shoot, taught me how to play the game, hopefully the right way. And, um, you know, kind of gave me a, a foundational base to um, be able to, to compete at, at a level um, beyond high school. Right, and uh, that's what I want to get to. And correct me if I'm wrong in, on any of this, but you went to Hudsonville High School, right? Okay. I did, yep. Okay, and your senior season uh, would have, I believe, been right around the time state champs in the airwaves. We hit the airwaves in fall of 2002. You were the class of 2002, correct? 2001, so just the year oh, before. Okay. But I remember you guys starting okay. up and okay. starting to create some ex more excitement for uh, all, right. all the sports in Michigan. Right. And I don't mean to date you or anything like that, you know, but I've been with the show from the beginning, too. So I'm old. Yep. Uh, but um, what do you remember thinking about your high school days now? You know, what, what do you remember the most about playing for the Eagles? I mean, you were the quarterback, right? You were the point guard. I was. Yep. And uh, I think probably the thing that I remember most is uh, is the friendships. Um, you know, we, we were fortunate in football to have some really good teams. We played in the mm -hmm. state finals. Um, my sophomore and senior years, uh, made it to the quarters or semis, um, my junior year. And so, um, just a lot of, a lot of good times with good friends and, um, you know, being able to compete in sports together. Uh, I think that's a special thing about high school. You know, you're, you're with the kids that you grew up with, you're with the, your, your good friends, um, on the court, on the field competing. And then, you know, in hoops, um, it, it was more of the same. Uh, we didn't quite have the, the same level of success. Um, but again, uh, it's, the, it's the, the experience of high school athletics with your friends, with your teammates. I think that makes it special. Yeah. And, you know, that was a really uh, great era, especially in Class A hoops. I mean, it was a gauntlet once you got into the tournament. There were a lot of players who went on to do a lot of big things at big levels. So um, and the West Side was was no different. Um, so, you know, uh, but you were also a football player. Yeah, so uh, in hoops, just kind of like what you mentioned, 
uh, we, we drew the first round Benton Harbor, number one team in the state right. in our district opener. And so right. uh, that was obviously a, a big challenge. They had five college uh, basketball players on that team. Robert Whaley ends up going to the NBA mm -hmm. um, from that group. And so uh, physically a little bit outmatched, but we gave them a, a good battle and, uh, you know, they, they advanced and, and made a nice run. All right. So you went on to Hope College. And then, like a lot of really good players, you had an opportunity to play overseas. So I believe it was Germany and Slovakia. Um, can you just talk briefly about that experience in your life? It's great to do it when you're young, too, because it's such a unique time in a, in a man's life. But um, also, talk about the experience and also maybe what's the biggest difference on how the game is taught there as compared to here? Yeah, uh, it was uh, an experience that you know, I wouldn't trade for a whole lot. I mean, it was uh, it was awesome. Uh, the chance to travel the world a little bit, uh, live in a different culture, experience different things, and uh, and play the game of basketball for a living for a little while. Um, it was, uh, I mean, I think any young basketball player's dream, um, as I had big aspirations growing up, um, it was uh, it, it was a lot of fun, um, challenging at times, but. Uh, definitely an experience that was was worthwhile and you, you talk a little bit about teaching the game and different yeah. approaches to teaching the game um i think the time when i was over there was kind of just a little bit before all of the maybe european influence started to come into the nba and started mm -hmm. to come over uh, back to the united states and so i felt like i was kind of really on the forefront of learning the game a, a different way learning a different style of how to play learning a different style of how to train um, learning a different style in terms of uh, tactics and strategy. And so I think that's, uh, it's been a big advantage uh, for me as a coach. Um, but also I think uh, just learning the game through different lens, I think has been uh, been powerful experience also. And at that time, you talk about the style difference. What was the biggest style difference between, you know, kind of what was going on here in the States and there? Yeah. I mean, uh, the U S game is, is much more athletic. It's much more um, dynamic um, more physical. And then, you know, over in Europe at that time, uh, it was, it was more fundamental. It was player movement, ball movement, as opposed to one-on-one -on -one isolation type stuff, which you saw a lot of, uh, you know, in the early 2000s and, and late nineties, um, here in the States. And so, um, you know, like I said, a different style of play, um, one that probably fit my game a little bit better. And, um, I'd say those are, are kind of the big differences. You came home, you worked for Michigan State for, for a little bit, got a chance to, you know, get some great tutelage and, and under the great Tom Izzo at a really peak Tom Izzo too, which was just, you know, fire and brimstone. I'm sure it was an yes. incredible experience. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, a uh, couple of years at Traverse City West, and, and now I believe you're approaching a decade at Grand Haven already. Um, what do you love the most about coaching at the high school level? And time goes fast, doesn't it? Um, you know, listening to you talk through a lot of those experiences brought back a lot of good memories real quick there. Right. Right. And, uh, just thinking back, you know, to my first team, you know, <laughs> we started out one and seven young, new coach, you know, guy doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. Um, what an experience that was. And then getting that team, um, you know, the kids turning it around and, and all of a sudden we win the district. And then, you know, some of the more recent teams here at Grand Haven, um, just playing some, some big time games, uh, in the tournament and, uh, you know, high school basketball is different. You know, you don't get to recruit, at least at most schools, you don't get to re recruit the players that you, you're going to be on your team. You know, you've got to develop them from a young age, um, youth program, all that sort of stuff. And you're really, uh, uh, you're, you're so much more than a coach. You've got so many different hats on throughout the course of the season from your youth program to your middle school, um, to your ninth grade team, your freshman, your, your freshman team, your JV team. Um, and then it's, it's all the, the other stuff too. It's, it's purchasing, it's, um, managing, hiring all, all kinds of things that, um, go beyond just Tuesdays and Fridays and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practices. It's, um, it, it's a big job. And I think, um, you know, coaches who are, who are in it in this state, uh, obviously they know that, but, uh, I think, you know, a little bit of, of recognition for just, uh, what they go through on uh on a yearly basis because it's you know if you want to do your program right it's it's a year-round type thing nowadays and um you know there's a lot of good guys out there doing it and uh just kind of give them a little 
a little praise for, for their efforts and their sacrifices. All right. Well, well said. Uh, let's get into the big topic at hand. And, and first off, what is your role with BCAM, the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan? I've just kind of been uh, on a few different small committees that Dan Young has set up, um, most recently with, with the seating process. Um, Dan, myself, Keith Guy, uh, Sean Finnegan, Kevin Pauga has been into some consulting with that as well. And, um, you know, just really the, the goal there is to try to improve things um, from the way they currently are. Um, you know, we've got a good tournament. We do. There's, it's not, it's not a, a broken deal. But I think like in everything and, and like, you know, you're coaching your team, you're always looking for what are ways that we can improve. And, um, you know, I think that we've come across a few things that uh, have been issues in the past in terms of um, how things are set up in the format of the tournament that we feel like uh, we can make improvements to, to to help have a better tournament for everyone involved. All right. Well, let me set this up and uh, you'll, I'm just going to let you roll with it and just kind of uh, give, you know, an example that, uh, you know, the audience will, will understand because there's kind of a lot of details within it. But uh, I think all really great positive moves. So balanced seating in the state tournament, we're aware, has been a topic of conversation, especially among you coaches for years. Uh, we've been talking about it. And I know the conversation dates back to 2016 when there were some things that were uh, officially filed and, and some suggestions. And progress has been made. I mean, they've had the uh, introduction of seeding the top two teams in each district and the introduction of the MPR rating system. So those were good things moving forward. But um, I think the, and I, you speak for the coaches, and I think you're pretty unanimous in that. Um, it, there needs to be mo needs to be more, and uh, so just tell our viewers and our listeners right now uh, what's coming next if the MHSAA executive board approves it. Yeah, so I, you know, when we kind of started this process, um, I think it kind of evolved from um, listening to coaches around the state and getting their feedback. And what we heard was the first thing was. Um, the imbalance in the number of teams in each region, district, um, quarterfinal. So currently we've got situations around the state where there's regions of 28 teams, other regions have as few as 20. And just to be able to kind of balance that out a little bit, especially now that we're seeding the first and second team in each district, you know, those 28 team dis uh, regions, none of the two seeds receive a buy. Mm -hmm. um, and conversely on the other side, Regions with 20 teams, um, not only are the first and second teams getting a buy, but there's also some random teams that are getting buys as well. So just to kind of balance that out a little bit, I think um, was one thing that we heard from, from coaches around the state. Uh, second thing that we heard was, well, we got situations where maybe the top, two of the top five teams in the state are in the same district. Right. And trying to get those teams separated out just a little bit. You know, I know going back a ways, you think about, the great teams from Saginaw High, the great teams from Saginaw Arthur Hill, sometimes number one and two in the state, maybe even playing on that first Monday in the district tournament. That wouldn't happen now, um, but they're still playing in the district. And right. um, I think just the opportunity for those teams to play maybe on a little bit bigger stage in a region, in a regional matchup, um, was something that I think coaches felt um, would be a good step forward. So um, our process is going to be to seed uh, the whole region as a whole and um, move teams out of assigned districts prior to the season, but rather follow their rankings at the end of the season to kind of determine where they're going to sit within their region. Um, I think there are a couple really positive things to doing that. Number one, um, for teams that maybe struggled throughout the course of the season, they're going to have a, a winnable game in the first round because they're going to be playing another team who is toward the bottom end of the rankings because basically the top 10 teams in each region will have a buy. So it's good for those schools. Um, and they'll also get to host that game, the higher of the two seeds. Uh, for teams that maybe had a really great season, now you're in a position where you won't face maybe that other team that's been a, a really good team in your district, potentially until the regional final. And so um, I think it just gives some good balance and um, it's really a common sense, it makes sense type of thing um, for all schools involved. And then finally, I would say that the third thing that we heard was, you know, we got to continue to promote our product, um, promote our tournament. 
you know, there's so many different tournaments popping up around the state. Um, we got to remind people that the MHSA tournament is the tournament at the end of the season. And so um, I think, you know, with the seeding process and developing brackets um, on a little bit bigger scale, I think there'll be some um, some variety uh, and some uh, people not knowing exactly what's coming as they go into the tournament, which will allow for some excitement. You know, the, the excitement of, you know, who am I going to play? And uh, hopefully we can partner with somebody to get a, um, a selection show similar to like what football has and, and kind of really promote our tournament and, um, you know, give some juice to it as it's about ready to kick off. Well, you're talking to the right guy about getting that word no. out, getting that show going. You know, that's music to uh, the State Champs Network's ears. Uh, we would love to be associated with that in any way that we can. And we already work with BCAM and, and the MHSA. They're our partners. So uh, that sounds exciting. And, uh, yeah, to have a selection Sunday and have, you know, kids, you know, gathering around their uh, computer screens, their phones, their, you know, streaming service, uh, I think would be uh, a super deal and um, and just really amp the excitement up for everything. And I agree with you. The state tournament is the tournament. And now that we've added games, we're playing 22 games a season, lots of showcases going on, which are fabulous, you know, throughout the regular season, gives teams an opportunity to play teams they would normally, um, especially uh, teams that are highly ranked and just kind of see where you're at. Um, but this is the natural progression. And what's great about it is the MPR you don't have to do any adjustments with that. The rankings are, are already there. The seeds are kind of already laid out for you. Yeah, that's, that's you know, another piece of the puzzle is, you know, we didn't want to rip everything up and, and start from new. Um, you know, this is data that we already have. You know, every team in the state has an MPR number right now. And so there's no extra work that really needs to be done other than to say, you know, here's your one through 22 ranking uh, for each region and put them on the bracket right where they go. And uh, I, th I think it'll be a good thing. I don't think it's a ton of extra work on anybody's part and uh, a positive step forward for BCAM, for the MHSA, for coaches and players in our state. So there's an old saying, uh, your words to God's ears. I think in this case, your words to Mark Ewell's ears. There was progress in the fact that the MHSA Committees have already looked at this and unanimously approved it. So now it's going to move to the executive board uh, once the season is over and things start to get reevaluated. Um, but uh, there is a good chance that if everyone's on board, this could be happen as early as next season. Yeah, and we're really excited about that. You know, when we first kind of uh, pitched this to the, the MHSA, the people at the MHSA, um, they were very positive. And, you know, it's been great to work with them. You know, Will. Uh, who's head of basketball and Tricia and Andy Freshour and um, people that have, have really, they've listened, um, they've made suggestions, we've made changes. And so it's, it's kind of been through the vetting process a little bit. And then we we're able to um, pitch it also at the, the uh, MHSA uh, basketball committee this past uh, fall and uh, got really rave reviews. I mean, it passed with, with unanimous approval and um, so it's been it's been a really good process, I think. Um, I think it's got support, you know, certainly from from our coaches association, um, from coaches around the state, from athletes, um, from athletic directors. And, um, you know, looking forward to continuing to work with the MHSA to to continue to make positive changes uh, where, where we feel like they're needed. You can add a check mark in the box for state champ support as well, as far as this endeavor right. goes. Um, and just last question, um, BCAM, the association, um, you know, there are still, you know, coaches maybe who have, have not become members. Uh, it really is something uh, all coaches should belong to. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good organization. You know, um, the things that they do, promoting their, their one team, one unity um, promotion right now and, um, all the, the, the postseason awards, you know, the clinic that they run in the fall, um, connecting coaches with other coaches. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great organization to be a part of. Um, so I would say if you're not, you know, it's uh, maybe time to get, get with it. Um, but uh, it's, it's also, I think, if I'm not incorrect here, I think it's the, the largest organization in the country in terms of it coaches. Is. And um, I think that that speaks volumes of the quality of work that is done through the organization, um, but also coaches in Michigan um, wanting to be together and wanting to work together um, to help make basketball in our state 
uh, the best possible game it can be. Well, Grand Haven head coach Greg Eming, thank you so much for taking uh, time here to uh, join us here on Hang Time. We look forward to uh, talking again and look forward to uh, coming back together when we officially uh, launch uh, this new seating system for basketball. I think it will be um, a wonderful thing for all involved, both boys and girls. You bet. Thank you, and I appreciate your support as well. And uh, looking forward to, uh, to seeing where this goes. Thanks, Coach.